And I've been getting calls, several calls, Gary Tourism Authority. I've been receiving several inquiries about Red Chef and the service to the end. We've been working on that to link up uh, the different agencies overseas also. Because it's in our interest to make sure that Jet comes to Guyana regularly. And I'm pleased that even before the first flight or after the first flight of the flight, I remember he had telling me three flights from Barbados. But they heard him just now said four flights from Barbados. And very soon they will want to make it daily flights. This is something that we really, really appreciate. We really want. And Regent has done that for us. Our tourism and our counterparts in Barbados, we've been working over a period of time to do packages tourism. In other words, we want people coming from Europe, they come to spend, let's say, four days in Barbados, go to the beaches, and come to write a beautiful Guyana and see the wildlife. Go, go to Kaichur. Go to the rainforest, so we can combine that package tourism. We did not have that area before, but with reliable service from Redjet, we feel that the tour operators in Barbados, this could be a huge boost for Richard Seeley and his team. And so we can work together to promote destination Barbados slash Guyana. And this is what Redjet is all about bringing people together. I don't want to stop a bit by a bank in my jet. <laughs> but the fact that I'm so happy and all that my jet is going to do is here today. They have delivered. And we really sincerely hope that other governments in the Caribbean can see the wisdom of carrying coming the true spirit as all Caribbean people should, be, should work together with each other, complement each other in the development of our Caribbean region or a Caribbean tourism, or a Caribbean culture. And this is what it's all about. And I hope very soon that the other team will get the necessary permission. If they don't get the necessary permission, then I'm sure the discussions with President Jack Bill will continue to look at our options. Oh, great. We need to build that up to a daily service. And when and if our little travels and troubles uh, our sort out in uh, Trinidad, we hope to be also coming from Port of Spain to here. And I know again that is a route that's very close to the parts of the people of Guyana. As people know, we have an um, MD82 aircraft with 149 seats. People have said on the way down today it was one of the most comfortable flights they ever had, and I appreciate their comments. We have a Red Jet family, and we call it a family because although we're an airline, we're a small company. We have 89 employees today directly employed, representing 17 different nationalities. Red Jack is now, certainly in Barbadian terms, it is probably one of the most internationally represented businesses in, 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 in Barbados. 17 different countries. We have brought the expertise into the Caribbean from all over the world and from within the Caribbean itself. And we have honed that into one really strong professional team of people who can deliver safe and reliable air, air transport for everybody in the region. And I know we're very excited about that. Um, people have, won't necessarily know those issues about Red Jet. We do have, our pilots have on average over 10,000 flying hours experience. And that represents somewhere in the region of 15 years of commercial flying. So you can see the depth of experience that Red Jet has. The depth of experience in providing reliable and safe aviation from all over the world, and that experience has been brought in to the Caribbean to ensure that our low-fare airline is always going to be the best run, the best efficient airline, and the one that's going to produce the lowest fares. So we're a famous uh, writer called C.L.R. James, and he wrote in the New World Journal that Rowan Canai was, and I quote, the high peak of West Indian cricketing development, and praised his adventurous attitude. Red Jet was created by, in many ways, by, by Robbie uh, Burns and uh, to a lesser extent by myself. We like to think that that spirit of adventure that was talked about, that we have a little bit of that, and that we will continue to bring that development to the rest of the Caribbean, and that one day everyone in the Caribbean will be able to fly because no fares will be the norm.
We've arrived today with an almost full jet of 149 people. Those people have travelled down here with great excitement. They've travelled for many different reasons. Some have come to visit family and friends that they may not have seen for quite a long time. Other people have come down to support the West Indies play against Pakistan. And other people have just come to experience the fantastic products that is Guyana. There is such a, a vast variety of tourism um, resorts and tourism opportunities for people. Um, and it's really fantastic to see the people traveling today and as I've spoken mainly with them, there were so many people coming for many different reasons. What I think especially resonates with people in the West Indies and particularly in Guyana is that high fares have restricted the social inter, inter uh, communication and the, the meeting between family and friends throughout the region. And it has been a single thing that I've noticed is that the amount of people who just come up and say, thank you so much. I haven't seen my friends or my family for quite some time. And no fairs are now making this possible. So we, we celebrate in people's happiness that they're able to come together more often and to be able to mix and develop as other people in the world are able to do. And now that no fairs have arrived, we all know that up to a few weeks ago it would have cost over 400 US dollars to fly down to uh, Guyana from Barbados. Well, there'll be no more $400 fares in this route. 